Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Retro Gaming with Hopper and thank you for watching my video. Today we're going to learn a little bit about the two different types of coils that are in these EM machines. Uh, the one that has uh, the piston in it that drives up inside and the ones like on the switches that's just an electromagnet that pulls switches open or closed. I'll explain to you what they do and I'll show you how to change the sleeves in in the certain in certain coils and changing the sleeves in the coils is should be a must when you pick up an EM pinball machine um, unless you pick up one that uh, somebody has already gone through if it was me, even if somebody told me they went through it all when I got it home, I would check my sleeves, check the sleeves and see if they were changed and change them. The second thing I always do on these before I even plug them in, clean every stinking contact and switch in the machine before you even plug it in and turn it on. Unless, like I said, unless you buy it from somebody that's already gone through the machine and you tested it out before you took it home. I'm talking about ones that you, you pick up out of somebody's garage or in a basement or <clears throat> in a building that they said, oh, it's been sitting for a while. As uh, soon as they say it's been sitting for a while, then the first thing I'm going to do, clean all my switches and put sleeves in, co in the coils. So that's what we're going to go over today is the different types of coils and we're going to change, I'll show you how to change some sleeves and some of the in the cell or in the coils so let's get started let's have some fun all right now on these pinball machines you know if you buy one of these that's you know been sitting around for a while you know especially on these EMs I would suggest changing the sleeves and all your solenoids because that little I'll show you once we get the sleeve to the sleeve. But on these Gottlieb's, these ones aren't bad at all. I usually just take the whole whole bracket up off of here. Take those four screws out. And you can just lift him right up out and the plunger will stay put right there. Now you can inspect your plunger. That one, that one's pretty good. It still has a, a beveled edge on it. It's not all flattened out or mushroomed. Uh, the link. This is one of the kickers. One of your side kickers. The side kickers, they get used a lot. So those ones I definitely would, would change. But... The best thing is, is when you get one of these things, one of these old machines, if it, you know, sitting around, and, oh, when we put it away, it was working. Uh, yeah, that's fine, but, you know, the longer they sit, contacts get dirty. And I would suggest clean, before you even plug it in, you know, you're not going to pull one of these out of a, out of somebody's basement or garage or, wherever you find them sitting around and just take it home plug it in and expect it to work you're gonna have all kind of issues the first thing I would do to them is if nothing else clean the contacts there you can see we have our coil stop which is still still nice and still got some brass left on it so it's it's not all beat down our plunger isn't all beat down now here's our here's our sleeve. You can see that one's you know it, it's got some wear to it. These are made out of are a plastic or or a nylon. And there's the new one. You can see how much thicker the new one is. You know, there's a lot of wear on that one. 
Now on these, on the solenoids, there is two different types of the solenoids on these machines. You have this kind that the plunger goes up in, goes up in here and rides back and forth. On the other ones, you know, the, the coil, what the coil does is it creates a magnetic field. And when you, when you hit the flipper or hit the contact, it turns the coil on, this becomes a magnet. Your coil becomes a magnet and sucks the plunger up and pulling and making it kick. The other type are the ones that have the metal rod put into it that are permanently fixed inside. These ones when they turn on this becomes the magnet and there's a little plate that kind of sits right over top of it with your contacts. And when it turns on it sucks that plate down and closes the contacts. Then when it when it's done it comes back up and it's only a fraction of an inch. These are a lot quicker. That's why on a lot of these you'll see, uh, you'll see them they just tap 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 and that's just opening and closing those switches all the time. That's what the two types of coils that are mainly in the EMs. These ones never need rebushinged, but over time a lot of these are turned on all the time. Like your lock coil, when you turn on the game, there's a the lock coil sucks down, turns the game on. Now those are on constantly and they get a lot of heat in them and if they get too hot, you'll melt all the varnish off of the wires and then they'll start arcing across short and out and not working. On these, this is, has a longer stroke on it, so they don't create as much heat unless it's like on a scoring unit or a, or a, a step unit. Those ones are constantly pulling back and forth, you know, moving like for the ball and the ball counter. Those ones don't work as much as uh, some of the other ones that do that just constantly pulling in and out and if they stick what happens is it'll start melting this bushing. That bushing will get all soft and gooey and then your piston doesn't want to ride up inside of it very good. And when you see that then you know you have a stuck switch or something else going on that's making that coil heat up that much. And when you see that, then you know you have to first change the coil, put the coil in, and then just turn it on for a little bit and see if, you, if, it, if that coil's stuck. Find out what that coil is running. And if it's like on this, usually it's one of these two contacts are stuck closed. Or you put new rubbers on it, and when you put the new rubbers on it, they suck down and, and made contact. And, and now the kicker's sticking out and that'll heat it up. On the flippers, if they're heating up, usually uh, you might have a bad bushing or a link, bad center link or something like that that's uh, making it really hard for it to pull in and that coil will heat up. Most of the, the only coils that really heat up really bad are ones on stepper units and that because when that stuff gets stuck, it, it's hard to track some of that stuff down. And, and a lot of times the machine will still work and you can keep, and somebody will just keep playing it, even though that coil's back there, humming along, and you, it, it's just the way it is. But that's the first thing you, you check out. But first thing, clean all your contacts. So when you do plug it in, you know all your contacts are clean and you don't have to worry much about the contacts and as you're cleaning them like I said make sure you're, they're adjusted and open them and close them like on on this style that has the little metal plate that holds your um, piece that sticks out here and all your contacts are stuck through here and when it sucks down it closes them. Well when you're cleaning them you can push this down and see if they all open like they should and let go of it and see if they all open like they should 
and if they do then then you know that set of coils is good or that set of contacts is good and you don't have to worry about them sticking unless it's something else on the machine that's making them stay open or closed Like I said, these aren't very hard to change, and it it's easy maintenance to just stand here and change out all your sleeves. Because after 40 years, you know darn well that those sleeves are, have got a lot of wear on them. And contacts, like I said, I don't care if uh, somebody says, well, when we put it away, it was working. You know, that was... 10, 15 years ago, you know, we had just cleaned all the coil, all the contacts. I don't care. You get it. You make sure you clean them first before you plug it in. You'll just have a lot less problems. You can cure a lot of headaches and a lot of problems with just simply cleaning before you start trying to play. I know you can't help yourself, you want to play. I want to play the pinball machine. Let's take it on, plug it in, play. You gotta, you gotta do stuff first before you can even attempt to start playing. Some of these machines could be, you know, 40, 50 years old. A lot of the stuff in them is still original. Sleeves could be original. Just depends on the operator. If he actually, you know, took time and did maintenance on his machines, which a lot of them didn't, because they they have to be, they're making money. And the more money you spend on them, then the less money you make. And if you're, you're not the technician that does them, you're just the operator that runs around and collects the money out of them, then the machine's going to be down. And the longer the machine's down, the less money it's making. So there we have brand new sleeve, and we're ready to move on to the next one. So I'll, I'll replace all these sleeves on all my solenoids, except for the uh, flippers, because we're I have the kit ordered to redo the flippers, and we'll get the get the flippers a flipping better. You know, flip, flip, flipping. And the thumper bumpers, we'll get them taken care of. Uh, the kick out holes up top. And once those are all completed, we can move on to the guts of the backboard, of the head unit. And, you know, I buy, I just buy bags of sleeves. I'm not going to mess around and just count them up and Oh, okay, I need eight sleeves. No, me, I just buy bags of them because I go through them. Every machine I get in, I change all the coil sleeves. Just another preventive and more reliable when you do that. Less headaches down the road. You sell it to somebody and then you gotta, they come back and said, uh, the, co this, uh, the thumper bumper is weak and you find out, well, it's just a coil because it's binding, or uh, it's just a coil sleeve because the that sh this shaft is binding up inside the solenoid because it's so wore out. You'll just get a lot more power out of your solenoids, especially thumper bumpers, because they can bind up a little bit and then uh, it'll be weak when it goes to, you know, kick the ball away from the thumper bumper. And by all means, never oil sleeves. These are nylon with a metal metal piston that goes inside of it. Those are kind of like a like a self lubricating. That nylon is so smooth, it'll slide up and down through there really good. So never oil these. If you oil them, especially with uh, that that crappy WD-40, if the coil heats up, you could actually catch it on fire. So by all means, do not oil sleeves. So I'll get to work changing the rest of these sleeves, and then we'll come back 
and I'll start working on the head unit board with all the contacts in it. So let me get started and I'll get this finished up. Okay, now we'll, this is one of the thumper bumpers here. First thing we have to do on this is you see we have two nuts. We have one here and one on the other side. And I can kind of give you, this is your bump, this is a bumper assembly. An old one, of course. This ring here, this is what scoots the ball when it, when the, this is your contact. When the ball touches this, it contacts the solenoid, turns the solenoid on, and this is what kicks your ball away from the bumper. Those two nuts are the ones that are here and here. Those are the two we're going to take off. Most of the time, those are 5 sixteenths. You can tell how much easier it is to do these when the playing field is upside down. Upside down or turned over or whatever you want to say. And we have the three screws. We'll take out those three screws. That's the what holds everything in place. Holds the solenoid and everything in place. That's just my heater kicking on. When I come back from when I come home from the store, like I said, I have about I, I usually spend about two two and a half hours out here working on these. Okay, after you got your two screws out or three screws that holds everything in place, you can pull this unit right off of here most of the time. What do we got holding it? Okay. There we go. And there's our you can see our assembly. These are the two ears that those studs go up through and put your bolts on. And this is actually what pulls that down is your solenoid. Now what we have to do is we take out those these two screws without stripping them. Oh, because if you strip them, you're gonna have a hell of a mess. There's one. There it is. Take your two screws out. That's what retains your coil. Like so, and then you can just pull this right up out of there. You can see that plunger still has the taper on the end. It's still really good. Pull your assembly out. Your mounting bracket off, and there's your sleeve. Look how nasty that thing is. I don't care. Electrical parts, oh, we, they create this black crap. It's like carbon. Put your sleeve in. This ring here, this is what actually is the end of the stroke switch. On these coils, on thumper bumpers, you have two, two switches contact switches, whatever you want to call them. This one down here, that's the one that turns the coil on. That's this bottom, this green ring. That stud, that post that sticks down through, 
fits in this little cup here and that's what turns the bumper on. Now on these ones when the coil gets turned on it pulls down and then this little piece here opens this switch and turns the coil off. That's the way the pump bumpers work. Turn it on, turn it off, and then it drops back down. On, off. And that's what how that coil is turned on and off. Now on your flippers, we'll get into that more on another uh, when I rebuild those flippers, I'll do an entire video of rebuilding the flippers. And we'll go over everything on the flippers. Let's see, you can put it goes back down in here. Like so. Make sure you tighten that up. I, I pull that coil assembly or that coil whatever you want to call that I pull it tight up against the coil and then I'll put my screws in I'll make that as tight as possible because then you'll you'll alleviate some play you don't want your coil banging back and forth inside the, the coil holder Huh. There we go. Holy shit. Oh, excuse my French. I was gonna have to have somebody come and put that screw in for me. And like I said, I squeeze that together as tight as I can. And then tighten them up. Now when you go to put these, this back down on there, you have to remember that this switch here goes on top of this, like so. Yeah, come here. Get up off her. Hold your switch up a little bit. Get those two studs started in the holes. Like so, and then your so your switch is sitting on top of it. Now you can put your mount the pop bumper assembly, a coil holder, back down to your playing field. This game was played quite a bit, but most of the stuff I'm pulling off of this game is in really is in good shape. There hasn't been anything that I've seen that you know has been really worn out, except for the flippers. Those that's what gets used the most. Flippers and pop bumpers. Pop bumpers are always thumper bumpers, pop bumpers, whatever you want to call them, are the ones that those solenoids and those mechanisms get used an awful lot. There's a lot more mechanical parts to them, especially your flippers. Put your two nuts on. These are lock nuts, so when you tighten these nuts up, you don't have to go all Hercules on them. Just run them down and snug them up really nice. You go any more, and those those threads will bust right off. These threads will snap right off. 
and then you have to tear everything down and replace this this piece here so that's that one now I have two more thumper bumpers to do and two more hole kickouts and we will get started on those okay these are the two holes I have the red hole and the yellow hole you can't I, I have the red hole right here more under the camera but the yellow one is right next to it right uh, right right sitting over there and how these ones work is when the ball falls in the hole there's a little um, little lever inside that it hits on it comes up and turns on the kicker the kick out but this this coil is turned on by another relay. There's a set of relays for, for the hole, each hole. The ball falls in, trips the other relay. The relay closes, con makes contact, gives you your points, uh, whatever else it's supposed to do, you know, like an extra ball or a bonus or anything like that. And then at the end, it goes to the scoring reel. And once it's at the scoring reel, once it turns the amount of times, like we'll say this is 500, if it drops in the hole and you get 500 points, drops in the hole, turns that on, goes to a set of relays, and then shoots back to the scoring reel or vice versa. It, it, it may run right straight to the scoring reel, but it has to go to a set of contacts to tell the scoring reel how many points to give it. So we'll say it's 500, it'll drop in the hole, turn it on, it'll knock, it'll give you 500 points, one, two, three, four, five, and then at the end of that cycle, it trips another switch back to the hole relay, and then it kicks your ball out. So this coil. There's a, it has a lot more things it has to do before this coil is turned on. It has to give you your points, uh, like I said, 500, and then maybe a bonus, you know, one one bonus down on your your marks or your bonus lines on on the play field, and then it can turn the coil on to kick the ball out. And that that all happens in a in a second. Drops in, turns on, ding, 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 kick out. It's that quick. That's why it always sits in the hole for a little period of time because it has to go to the scoring reel and then back to the coil and then kick out. That's just the way that works. You know, so just a little tidbit of information that uh, you probably really don't give a crap about but I'll tell you how it works I told you how the thumper bumpers work and and on the, the kickers on those kickers that are down by your flippers which are that's the one we just finished finished up get you set up a little bit there we go now on these, same thing, you have your switches that touches the rubber. It hits the switch. If it's 10 points it, or 100 points, it clicks once. Clicks once real quick on your scoring reel. And then it kicks the ball and you have your end of stroke switch which shuts the coil off. Doink, doink. Just like that shoots it back and forth or shoots it up but the these contacts have to do two different two things turn the coil on and give you the hundred points that's why it's instantaneous because these ones do it at the same time as soon as you click it hit it hundred points and it's kicking even before the barely before the scoring reel even knows what the hell it's supposed to do it's that quick that it turns that coil on so a little more on what coils do. 
the one for the at the bottom that sends your ball back to the shooter that is right right over there This one, oops, yep, kick you at the same time. This one, the ball drops down, turns the switch on, and if it has things to do, which it does, this one will collect your bonus. Like on soccer, you have uh, the, the little, little balls in the, there we go in the back and the head unit that uh, when you run over a target or drop in that hole it shoots this ball up and it rolls down and it rolls down and it's sitting there waiting to be counted when the ball falls in here it hits that switch uh, the machine it already knows that there's bonus to be had and it sits there and kicks these balls down counting them counting them counting them counting them and then once your bonus is done then it, it switches from like ball one to ball two and then it resets drop targets and whatever else needs to be reset and then shoots it back over and ready to be shot back up and in, into the playing field again so this one that's what this coil and, the, and this assembly does so I, hopefully you learned something hopefully I explained things easily enough for you to understand and explain and know a little bit more about how these coils work and how the certain fixtures around the coils work, what turns them on, what turns them off. Just a little something about what goes on with coils and how some of them are used more than others and they'll have more wear in them more than others like your flippers get more more wear and I'll do another video and when we rebuild the flippers I'll do another video and show you how 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 to rebuild those flippers Maybe over here a little bit there's the flippers we'll rebuild the flipper units and get them all fixed up and ready to go uh, yeah it tells you that'll just gives you a little more information as to what what each one of these coils do what turns them on what they and what has to happen before the coil is actually turned on some of them are instantaneously like the pop bumpers um, that has two things on the pop bumpers that switch turns the coil on it pulls down and and pushes the ball away from the pop bumper but that same switch has to trigger like the 100 point relay so it can click up and give you your your score but that one is instantaneously so are your kickers at the bottom those are instantaneous even though there's two things that that has to do those switches have to do turn on the coil and give you points but it, it's instantaneously your kicker holes are a little bit more delayed because once the ball drops in the hole it has it does a few things holds the ball for an instant uh, racks up your points gets everything ready and it may have to turn on a light or something else and then when it's done doing its thing then it'll kick the ball out and that'll give you and that's how that one works like I said it's just a little slower because it has to do a, a few more things so I hope you enjoyed the video hope you learned something Hope I explained it well enough so you could understand how each one of these coils work and the two different types of coils that are in, in these EM machines. And if you like the video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. Until next time, see ya.